Hey, how you doing? I'm here on the block at New York Comic Con 2014 for CCP as usual. And I found one of the most interesting booths, a collaborative effort between a bunch of different artists that are here for the show working on different projects and different mediums. I had to come over and talk to them. So the first person I'm going to talk to is Katrina Cortezone. Cortezone. I knew I was going to do it. <laughs> Katrina Cortezone. She has some magnificent art, hyper-realistic, uh, done in a unique fashion. And I figured I would have to talk to her first. So Katrina, tell us a little bit about your stuff in particular. Okay. Where do you uh, come up with your ideas and you know your process and so on and so forth? Well, um, I'm, I'm trained as an oil painter, so I have a lot of patience to begin with. So doing charcoal drawings, it goes rather quickly for me from what I'm used to. And then um, I started doing uh, pop culture subject matter, you know, just so I could make some sales here at these uh, comic conventions and stuff. And I, I pick subjects that I like, you know, obviously. I'm a fan of Christopher Walken. I like Lord of the Rings. So I did a drawing of Gandalf. I like The Big Lebowski, so I did a drawing of the dude. Ties the like, table together. Yes, it really, it really does. It really ties it together. Uh, so yeah, I just use one black charcoal pencil, one white charcoal pencil, and a smudge stick, and I just wear these uh, cheater glasses so that I can have superhuman vision so that I can really see all the fine details, um, do all the little tiny wrinkles and all the textures of the fabric. I really like to challenge myself, so every time I pick a new subject, I will try and push myself further and do something a little more challenging. So. I mean, these are fantastic, and like the thing that jumps out at me is like they're unique. Like it's not just like a particular pose or a particular thing. Yeah. It'll be like specific, you know, uh, to your style or whatever it is. Like we were talking about the Spider-Man yesterday, yeah. and my friend Tommy asked yeah, me, was like, where did you come up with that? Like, was that based on something? You were like, no, I just kind of put it together. Yeah. Spider-Man and the smoking jacket kind of makes sense, I think. Yeah, uh, I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and now, uh, where are you guys based on? You based out of New York? Or? No, we're from, um, well, we, we're from originally uh, Gary, Indiana, but uh, right now we live uh, in Champaign, Illinois, so that's East Central Illinois, um, and uh, just about two hours south of Chicago. So you guys do a lot of cons, or? We do now, yeah, we're starting to, uh, we're, we're, we try to do at least one every month, um, and this is our third time back here in New York, uh, at the New York Comic Con, so... Perfect. Now we're going to swing around to this side because now we have a uh, artist at Epion 5. Yep. Right? There's Mike West. Epion, how you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Good. Um, so this is another artist that's sharing the booth in particular, and there's all kind of ties together. We're going to bring it full circle in a minute. Cool. But Epion, you tell us a little bit about your stuff. Ah, my name is Epion 5, and I specialize in stencils and spray paint. So what you see isn't a poster. It isn't a silk screen. I like to take Chinese newsprint comics. Like if you look at this Captain America here, you see an actual Captain America comic that I glued to the canvas. In the case of Bill Murray, I use Chinese newsprint. And then what I do is I draw up the design after I get it all drawn and then tweaked out how I want it. I'll cut stencils, one for every color that you see. So I'll take that stencil, I lay it down on the canvas, and I hit it with the color of spray paint. Lay another stencil down, hit it with another color of spray paint. So it's basically, it's, it's graffiti style street art on canvas. A little bit more ornate though. Yeah, no, and it's, it's crazy because like when you look at it from far away, you see one thing, right. and when you get up close and you really look, you're like, oh wow, and so you see the a lot, layers a lot of in it. people never even see the, the news printer. Comics yeah, actually and especially on. like because the, the bigger pieces you from a distance you're like oh that's a great Bill Murray and when you get up close you're like oh what's all this Chinese in there that's pretty crazy. Yep. So they, you they don't actually see like the small variations in the spray paint. They think it's just a poster from far away. Yeah, it makes everything kind of tie together. And I see if the wood the wood carvings are fantastic. Yes. That is a that's a new venture of mine. I had a jigsaw decided I was going to use it. So yeah, cut out the shapes of wood. Same process. I'll cut a stencil and spray paint for every color. Hit the wood with the uh, colors. Fantastic. I mean, I know you guys, they're really, they're really big, yes. which is, you know, kind of unique because I like a lot of people want to make stuff that's kind of yeah. small, easy to transport, but you guys went big with it. I mean, I'm sure you only do a limited amount of pieces per show. Is that I, what I mean? I, well, I would love to bring as many pieces as I can, but being that it's like canvas and wood, it's all heavy, I can only bring a little bit at a time, but the nice thing about it being stencils and spray paint is... Uh, as long as the stencils hold up, I can make multiple editions of a piece. So even if I sell out of Wolverine, 
I can make more for people. Yeah, and so is, is, there, is there a place they could order your stuff online? Like, you know, specifically, because again, if, yeah. they, if he sold out at this particular con and somebody would want something well, like that. Well, I go by the name Epion5, that's my tag name, and the nice thing about that is I'm the only guy named Epion5. So if you Google it, it brings everything up. Etsy, Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook. I mean, literally everything. So, like, my business cards, I just put my name on there and tell people Google. That's it. That's fantastic. And now this brings us to the, the last part of the booth, yeah. which I found really interesting, in particular to me personally, because I'm a huge fan of Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror Picture so Show. So, there's a documentary that's being made about yes. Rocky Horror Picture Show right now. Yes. And you have provided the artwork, I guess, yes. for yeah. that. Uh, and uh, this is the director. This is the man. What's your name again, sir? I'm Sean Stone. Sean. Sorry, Sean. Quite so, Tell us a little bit about the movie, Sean, and then how is, we got this artwork involved and how it all came together. Well, uh, I used to own a movie theater in Indiana called the Crossroads Cinema, and uh, actually every person who's exhibiting in this booth this weekend knows each other because of the Crossroads Cinema. We all met there uh, at Rock, the Rocky Horror Picture Show more than 15 years ago. You know, Epion 5, Katrina, Brandon from uh, Manor Monster Studios and Warlords of War, we all met because of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Uh, and you know, more than 15 years later, it's still bringing us together. You know, we're all from the same part of Indiana. You know, uh, and coincidentally enough, our 219 is our area code. We just happened to, you know, get this booth. So it was sort of like fate that we would come together here for New York Comic Con. But uh, we're running a campaign on Indiegogo right now to raise fun funds for our post-production process. Uh, and you can check it out at www.rockyhorrorsavemylife.com. Yeah, absolutely, and we're gonna we'll definitely post links so that people can make donations. So now, what is the documentary specifically about? Uh, well, I myself in relation it, to Rocky, but Rocky Horror. It's about the fans, the collectors, and the performers who've kept Rocky Horror alive for more than forty or almost forty years now. Uh, we're running a convention next year here in New York City, actually, at the Hammerstein Ballroom uh, called RHBS Forty. Uh, oh wow! And it, we're gonna be, you know, having like you know, it's gonna be the 40th anniversary convention. We're gonna have a, one of the biggest conventions that's happened in the past twenty years, and we'll be premiering our documentary there at that convention. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, me personally, I've probably seen Rocky Horror like 10 times on 14th Street. It's still oh, yeah. showing at the, it, I guess it's a UA now at this point, but it was originally a regular theater. They show it at a Chelsea Clearview now on 23rd Street. Oh, 23rd Street, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I haven't seen it in a few years on the big screen, but it's always nice. People pull out their props, they go through the whole motion, and then, you know, they do the whole thing. It's crazy, like 40 years later, that people are still kind of into it. Right. It's something that wasn't really intended to be that way in the first place. You know, like, it wasn't meant to be like an interactive kind of thing. It kind of just went in that direction. And, then, like, for it to continue through generation after generation, I just think is really funny. Um, and I, I actually saw the play on Broadway, too, when it was on yeah. Broadway. And it was, I wish like, it was a real fun time. It was a great time. So, so how'd you come up with the particular artwork for this uh, documentary? Like, well, like Sean said, we met through Rocky Horror years ago, and Rocky Horror's always had a, a huge place in my heart. I mean, the, the idea of the documentary is how Rocky Horror affects individuals. And if not for Rocky Horror, I don't think I'd be making artwork because because of the show, I met all my other friends who are also artists. And so when Sean needed some uh, help and some design work, and I more than I jumped at the chance, I offered to do everything for him. But I wanted it to give, I wanted it to have a very unique style because there's a lot of Rocky merchandise out there. Well, there's not a lot of Rocky, Rocky merchandise out there, so I really wanted to make something that showed my love of Rocky while still retaining my design flair. And he he was cool with it, you know. He basically let me have free reign to do whatever, so it just kind of worked out. I, I love mean, his work. I'm, a, I'm his biggest fan. <laughs> I, and the two pieces, are, you know, they're definitely amazing. They're definitely reflective of the show. Like, right away, I look at it. If there was no title on it, I'd know what it represented. Uh, really, really cool. I, you know, I wish you luck with the with the fundraising efforts. I'm sure it's going to work out fine. You guys are real true fans. And usually when that's where you come from, from the heart, you're not coming from a monetary standpoint and, like, trying to capitalize on it. You really make it something that you love. It's fantastic. And it tells a great story about you guys as a group because you wouldn't be sitting here at Comic-Con right now right. if it wasn't for that yeah. theater and that movie. Well... You guys have a great booth. Um, once again, so at Epion 5, you yep. put that in Google, they'll find you all over oh, the place. Yeah. Sean, give me a plug one more time on the... Rocky or Save My Life .com. Okay, and what about Katrina's room? Katrina? Katrina? She's dealing with some customers. Yeah, she, she's on Facebook, Katrina Catazone Art. She's very actually cool. the only Katrina Catazone out there as well. So. Ah, it's very <laughs> unique, very unique group here at, the, at the, the block. How do you guys like being on the block? I like the block, actually. It's my favorite. I, I was in the Artist Alley 
happened over two years ago. And Artist Alley was fun, but honestly, I like being around the people who are making the toys, the other contemporary artwork. Uh, it's just, it's, it's like a, a little community. It's like its own little town here within the convention. It's so cool, and it's one of the best areas. So we're going to let you guys get to it. You guys got tons of customers lining up. We're in the way. I want to get out of the way. But thanks again from, uh, from Live from the Block, 2014 New York Comic Con, Mike D for CCD. Just another interview in the books. See you guys soon.